The European Space Agency has been in charge of European spaceflight for decades. But now, private companies are taking over and will finally provide Europe with something it's long needed, reliable, frequent and cost-effective access to Earth orbit. Today we're going to be looking at 6 of the most exciting and innovative European spaceflight companies, see how their rockets work, when and where they are launching, and get some insights into the incredible and unheard of systems behind these rockets. Alright, let's dive right in. This is RFA, short for Rocket Factory Augsburg, who, believe it or not, find themselves in Augsburg, Germany. RFA was founded in 2018 and is developing a small satellite launcher called RFA-1. RFA-1 is a three-stage rocket made with stainless steel tanks, being 30 meters high and 2 meters wide. It can carry up to 1300 kilograms into a low polar Earth orbit and 150 kilograms into a geostationary Earth orbit, giving it the highest payload capacity out of all private European rockets. The interstage and fairings are made out of automotive grade carbon composites, which is a running theme throughout this company as will be evident in just a bit. Powered by 9 Helix sea level engines on the first stage and a single Helix vacuum engine on the second stage, the main launch vehicle runs on rocket grade kerosene, called RP-1, and liquid oxygen propellants, each engine having a specific impulse of 325 seconds and 350 seconds respectively. Its third stage, called Redshift, is a kick stage used for precise orbital maneuvers, among some other things. And in fact, because of Redshift, RFA-1 is the only rocket in this video that can provide access to cis lunar space. Now Redshift is powered by a single 1.5 kN Phoenix engine running on nitromethane and nitrous oxide and it has a reignite capability which means that it can ignite multiple times for several on-orbit corrections. Phoenix uses a pressure fed engine cycle which is simple, reliable and easier to restart. The main helix engines use an oxygen rich stage combustion cycle so a full flow of liquid oxygen and a small amount of RP-1 combust in a pre-burner whose oxygen rich exhaust spins up a turbine which powers the main turbo pumps. The oxygen-rich gas then fully combusts in the combustion chamber with the main flow of RP-1 to produce thrust. As stated in this awesome interview by the everyday astronaut with Stefan Brichenk, the current chamber pressure is 100 bar, but they're aiming to push it all the way up to 300. Now the reason I'm so excited about this company is the way they build their rockets. They want to keep their rockets as cheap as possible, so they are using standard automotive parts on their engines. As the company COO explained, the same company that builds the exhaust and other parts for the engines of German cars also builds all the fuel lines and valves for RF-8 engines. They are saving tens of thousands of dollars just by building their rockets like you build a car. So far they have done multiple hot fire tests of both Helix engine variants and also their Phoenix engine and in May 2024 they completed a 5 engine static fire of their first stage. In August 2024, they attended a 9 engine static fire of their first stage 1 flight hardware, but sadly there was a fire in one of the turbo pumps which led to an explosion and a loss of vehicle. Currently, the first flight of RFA-1 is scheduled for no earlier than the third quarter of 2025, launching from the Saxeford Space Centre in Northern Scotland. It will carry 7 payloads into a 500km sun synchronous orbit, but keep in mind that this could change at any time, so don't be surprised if it gets moved to 2026. Next up, we have PLD Space, a Spanish company developing multiple vehicles, even reusable ones. First up, we have Miura 1, which is a single stage, partially recoverable suborbital launch vehicle standing at 12.7 meters high and 70 centimeters wide. It can carry payloads of up to 100 kilograms into a 150 kilometer suborbital trajectory, and these payloads, together with the rocket itself, can be recovered as the rocket splashes down in the Atlantic Ocean using parachutes. It is powered by a single Tepral B engine, a pressure fed engine running on RP-1 and liquid oxygen, and this engine is the first fully private Carolox engine developed and flown in Europe. On October 7th, 2023, Mira 1 launched for the first time from the, um... El Arenosillo. Well, that test center in southern Spain. It reached an apogee of 46 kilometers before splashing down in the Atlantic and sinking due to water leaking into the propellant tanks. Since then, PLD have switched focus to their next rocket, Mira 5, which is a two-stage orbital class small satellite launcher. Along with the two main stages, Mira 5 also has an optional kick stage, which for example can be used to circularize orbits. 
This rocket will be 35.7 meters long and 2 meters in diameter, being able to carry up to 1 ton into a low Earth orbit. Its first stage is powered by 5 pump-fed open-cycle liquid oxygen and RP-1 Tepral C engines. Try saying that 5 times in a row. And its second stage is powered by a single vacuum-optimized Tepral C. Just like Mira 1, its first stage will be recoverable, with it splashing down in the ocean using parachutes. This recovery method has actually already been tested, because in April 2019, they took the first stage of a Mira 5, hooked it up underneath a helicopter and took it to a height of 5 kilometers before dropping it into the ocean. Everything worked out fine, the parachutes deployed and it splashed down, and was then brought back to shore to be checked out. Its first launch is currently scheduled for no earlier than 2026 from the Guyana Space Center in French Guyana, South America. Next up is the Miura Next. And this rocket is very interesting compared to the previous two, as it has three separate booster configurations. The standard Miura Next is a 60 meter high, 3.5 meter wide, two stage, partially reusable medium lift launch vehicle. And unlike the previous two rockets, the Miura Next can land propulsively. When it lands on a drone ship, it has a payload capacity of more than 10,000 kilos into low Earth orbit, and when it does a so called back to base landing, it can carry 6,500 kilos to low Earth orbit. It is essentially the European Falcon 9. Just like Mira 5, it will be made out of aluminium composites and it will run on 5 liquid oxygen RP-1 engines with an oxygen rich stage combustion cycle on the first stage and another one of these engines in a vacuum optimized configuration on the second stage. Then we have the two other rocket configurations, the Mira Next Heavy and the Mira Next Super Heavy. Both of these are essentially just a taller Mira Next with more boosters, where the Heavy configuration has two additional side boosters and the Super Heavy variant has four. The reusable Heavy variant can bring 20 tons into low Earth orbit and a reusable Super Heavy variant can even bring 2.5 tons to Mars. Also, just imagine four Mira Next boosters all coming down and landing on four separate pads. Wow. Mira Next is also supposed to carry PLD's Lynn spacecraft, which will be Europe's first commercial crewed spacecraft. It will carry up to 5 astronauts per flight and is capable of lunar transfers, so in theory, we could see it docked to the gateway in a decade or so. Mira Next will launch no earlier than 2030 from the Guyana Space Center. Next up we have yet another awesome company with a super interesting rocket design, which I have to say, it is my favorite. This is Skyrora XL, being built by the Britain based Skyrora. With a length of 22.7 meters and a diameter of 2.2 meters, this 3 stage rocket might look just a little bit chunky compared to the other rockets, but that might actually be one of the reasons I like it so much. The reason for it being like this is because of the propellants it's using, which are RP-1 and a highly concentrated hydrogen peroxide, also known as high test peroxide. Unlike the previous rockets, neither of these propellants are cryogenic, so they can be stored in coaxial propellant tanks, which essentially means that the fuel tank is inside the oxidizer tank. This, together with the composite materials of the main body, causes a decrease in dry mass and an increased payload capacity, which will be around 315 kg into a sun-synchronous orbit between 200 and 1000 km. It uses 9 pump-fed Skyforce engines on its first stage and 1 vacuum-optimized Skyforce on the second stage, and just like some of the other rockets, it uses a reignitable pressure-fed engine on the third stage. The engine cycle of Skyforce is also really interesting and unique, as it is comparable to a closed cycle version of the Russian RD-107. The high test peroxide, or HTP, runs over a catalyst and decomposes into steam and oxygen gas. This gas runs past the turbine, spinning up the turbo pumps. Now because the RD-107 uses liquid oxygen as its oxidizer, the decomposed peroxide just gets vented overboard after spinning up the turbo pumps. But, like I said earlier, Skyrora XL uses HTP as its oxidizer. So after spinning up the turbine, the oxygen gets redirected into the combustion chamber and is burnt there for thrust. This makes Skyforce the first stage combustion engine using HTP as an oxidizer. Skyrora is also attempting a mobile launch infrastructure, which allows for interchangeable launch locations and minimal changes to existing spaceports. On May 26, 2022, they did a hot fire test of their Skyforce engine, and if all goes well, we could see a launch no earlier than the end of 2025 from the Saxifort spaceport in Northern Scotland. I really hope Skyroar succeeds, because this rocket is awesome. This is Orbex Prime. 
and although it sounds like a planet straight out of Helldivers, that couldn't be further from the truth. This is the 19 meter high, 1.5 meter wide, two stage small satellite launcher being developed by the British company Orbex. Orbex, originally called Moonspike, was initially founded in 2015 as part of a crowdfunded moon mission, but after barely raising one tenth of the needed costs, it was renamed to Orbital Launch Express, or Orbex for short. In 2018, they started development of their orbital class rocket named Prime. Now, although not a whole bunch is known about this rocket, we do know that it is still very innovative. The rocket is made to be very carbon efficient and lightweight, with its main body being made out of carbon fiber. The rocket uses propane and liquid oxygen as its propellants, and because propane stays in liquid at cryogenic temperatures, Prime can also use coaxial propellant tanks, which could cut total mass by up to 30%. With six currently unnamed engines on the first stage and one engine on the second stage, it will have a payload capacity of 180 kg to low Earth orbit. The first stage engines will be pump fed, with a currently unknown cycle, whereas the second stage appears to be pressure fed. Oh, and did I mention, it will be reusable. That's right, Prime will have a recoverable first stage, and the way they do it is absolutely awesome. After stage separation, the so-called reflight system will split the interstage into four pieces, which essentially act as aero brakes, and together with a parachute they will guide the first stage to a soft splashdown. It will then be brought back to shore to be refurbished. I was honestly really surprised when I first heard about this, but they have actually done some tests and it seems to be working, so I really hope to see it in real action. Prime is expected to launch towards the end of 2025 from the Saxofort spaceport. The penultimate company is High Impulse, with another unique rocket. This Germany-based company is building the Small Launcher 1, or SL1, and SL1 is yet another three-stage small satellite launcher with a length of 33 meters and a width of 2.2 meters. It can carry 600 kilograms into a low Earth orbit, and it also has an optional kick stage, in case you want to get to a really high orbit. Now what sets this rocket apart from the rest is its very interesting type of propulsion. The SL1 uses hybrid propellants, so it uses both liquid and solid propellants. Their Hyplox 75 engine is pump fed and uses the standard liquid oxygen as its oxidizer, but it also has a grain of solid fuel, which in this case is paraffin. And for your information, paraffin is I guess kind of comparable to a solid kerosene. Anyways, Hyplox 75 uses a gas generator to spin up a liquid oxygen turbo pump, where a small, separate helium pressurized tank of ethanol is needed to combust with a small amount of liquid oxygen. Hot exhaust gas comes from the gas generator, spins up the turbine, spins up the pump, you know the deal. Two Hyplox 75 engines are powered by one pump assembly. So what I've been showing here isn't exactly correct. In reality, it's closer to something like this. So two Hyplox 75 solid fuel grains are powered by a single liquid oxygen pump. Kinda confusing, but also really cool. Stage 1 will have 8 Hyplox 75 engines, so 4 turbo pumps, and Stage 2 will have 2 Hyplox 75 pumps, and thus 4 Hyplox 75 thrust chambers. Now luckily the third stage will be a lot simpler, using 4 smaller pressure fed engines, the Hyplox 25. High Impulse have also announced a kick stage called High Move, which will also use hybrid propulsion, likely a single Hyplox 25 or Hyplox 10, but other than that, not a whole lot is known about this rocket. The single chamber and single pump version of Hyplox 75 has already been flown on their suborbital SR-75 rocket, which reached an apogee of 50 km. SL-1 will launch no earlier than 2025 from the Saxofort Space Center, and personally, I'm really excited for this one. And lastly, we have ESAR Aerospace, another German company building a small satellite launcher. Their rocket, called Spectrum, has a height of 28 meters and a diameter of 2 meters, and Spectrum actually has the second highest payload capacity out of the upcoming rockets in this video, with a mass to LEO of 1000 kilograms. It was founded straight out of university, which is pretty cool, and they produce all their parts in-house. It has 9 liquid oxygen and propane powered gas generator cycle Aquila engines on the first stage and 1 vacuum Aquila on the second stage, and on February 14th, 2025 they performed a 30 second 9 engine static fire of its first stage, and in the third quarter of 2024 they also did a static fire of the second stage. As of the recording of this video, Spectrum is less than 72 hours away from its maiden launch, which will make it the first of the upcoming rockets in this video to fly. 
This launch will be the beginning of a new era for European spaceflight as it will be the first ever orbital launch from the European continent, launching from the Andoya rocket range in Norway. So, those were all the big upcoming European private launch providers, all of whom are hopefully launching within just a few years. I really hope you liked the video. I spent a lot of time on it so it would mean the world to me if you subscribed. And if you really like my channel, there's always that join button, so go and have a look there. Thank you Ryan Reichlin for being my first channel member, and I hope to see you in the next video.